Boom. Good. Okay. We had some tef- yeah, yeah. technical difficulties. No problem, so let's try it again. Sorry. Okay. So anyway, brother, welcome. Thanks, thanks for coming here. Fan. Thanks. Thanks. So for having what me. we were saying before, we actually said this already, but let's say it again okay. because the people didn't hear it. You, Don't you were worry. one of the pioneers of stand-up comedy in Brazil. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Uh, I started with like four or five guys. We started doing it like 16, 17 years ago. And uh, nobody knew about stand-up. It was something that I found out when I came here to live and play basketball. I had a scholarship to play basketball. And I watched Jim Gaffigan. Oh, wow. And Brian Regan. Ah, I know those guys. And I thought it was <laughs> so weird because those guys were like, "That's." I was questioning, is, is his, uh, does he call, is his name Brian Regan? Does he, is actually him? Because we used to have characters and impersonators so it was uh, kind of weird but at the same time it was interesting because i'm not a guy who does characters and i do observations and i write i was a journalist I'm, I'm, i have a degree in journalism so it was interesting for me to see those guys doing comedy and i thought we could do the same in my country it's so crazy that it took that long for it to get to brazil yeah you would think that because everything else i mean you guys have movies mm-hmm. and you know uh, i mean city of god you have action movies you have all these you have so much that's so similar. The fact that stand-up comedy made it there is so unusual. It took uh, it took a long time. And it was, I don't know why, but the image of a comedian speaking like with a blazer or like a suit or something. Like was Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, it was yeah. very American, you know. Oh. And those jokes didn't actually connect that much with us. Like, oh, I have those pockets. And it was something that we have bigger problems than <laughs> oh i just have a pocket where am i gonna put my pen it was like it was it was something that i could we couldn't connect that much but mm. when we when we saw there was another people doing other stuff and you, there was like this huge role that we could actually explore that was when it became interesting for us so comedy in brazil there would basically be like uh like say if i was a brazilian comedian mm-hmm. i would come up with a fake name you would and, and i would do a, a character a wig bro a wig a wig yeah, certain an outfit outfit like uh, very over the top screaming and yeah. uh, and that still uh, this still exists in Brazil this is like a popular for the, the people mm-hmm. stand up I'm not saying that it's for everyone now I have my Netflix special it be- it's becoming huge because uh, we have some other options right now with the internet everything changed the game changed completely so we have uh, what is good has its own space right now. It's not only what the TV wants you to watch it. So the game changed a little for for all of us. So how did you start out? Did you start out by going to music clubs or? It was, I actually started in a, <laughs> a BDSM club. A, you, a sadomasochist yes, club? Yes. Really? <laughs> I remember that there was like pictures of cocks in the bathroom <laughs> and and like vaginas, like huge vaginas, and we had a, and we had that show, and it was it wasn't good, but it's, it was an experience for all of us mm. to go on stage and try to 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 show them uh, our opinions and uh, our jokes and some irony and sarcasm, which which was something that people wasn't watching uh, uh, but then it becomes it becomes something huge and we got chances to go to tv and everything else but at first it was difficult because people could not understand is he a character is he playing a part right so that's why i had and i still have a lot of problems with the law because like i did a rape joke which i'm not proud of (laughs) i'm saying it's not something oh i'm so over the uh, over the line and but uh, he was like, does, he, does this guy wants people to be raped? What is, what is he thinking? What is, because all those jokes was taken out of context and put mm-hmm. it on newspapers oh. and kind of killed, uh, it kind of killed uh, my desire to do comedy over that as well. Really? Yeah, it was, it was difficult, man, because he was like journalists, uh, uh, journalists uh, in the audience waiting for me to say some shit. To mm. put out of context and then got like uh, fucking like billions of clicks on their websites right, because of, of a joke I did. Yeah. And that's how we, the controversy was starting over that. I don't know if it's the same thing here. So they knew that this was a new thing. Yeah. They, and then, so they would come to see it and then. W- w- were they criticizing it before this? It was it was huge. Everybody loved it at really? first, but when be- when 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 man when we started to have money and uh, TV shows and we kind of uh, 
ran away out, out of the underground. I was doing shows at midnight, like packing a three, 300 seat theater at midnight in Brazil. That was my thing, underground in Sao Paulo, in the middle of right. nowhere. But then people, oh, this guy's talented. Let me give him a chance. So they put me on TV and out of nowhere, I was on TV doing the same thing. Wow. So the, the, the country was not that prepared for what I, I was doing at the time. What kind of laws do you have in Brazil in terms of like the language you're allowed to use on television? Uh, you know, the, I'm not saying there's like a, a, a government censorship about what you can say or what you cannot say, but uh, sponsors and, and even TV stations and uh, the media is very sensitive about everything. Mm. because it's still a poor country. It's still, uh, Brazil is still a third world country. So we are, we are like, we have a lot of people that don't understand the, the oh, this is comedy, what, what, what's, what's comedy? So right. it was my duty to explain a little bit what was, what, what was stand-up and kind of open a road for all of us. That's how I felt. So you and you said three other it comedians? It was like three or four guys, yeah. So who were these other guys? Uh, they're still doing comedy in Brazil. Yeah, yeah they're still doing. They're still huge. What are their names? Uh, Marcelo Mansfield, uh, Danilo Gentili, Oscar Filho. That was a small group of guys that we started doing it. Brazilian Portuguese is such a beautiful language. You think that? I love it. I love it. It's like a song. It's like it sings. Do you so, really? Uh, well, I've been doing jujitsu for good. 23 years, so it's like to me that sound is like it's such a cool sound. What does what does Brazilian say in in jujitsu? Is that a word or something that they're still repeating that you know? Well, I mean, you know, poha, poha, <laughs> <laughs> which is come. Yeah, is that fuck or come? Which it's one is come. it? But sometimes poha it's fuck is come. Ah, poha though. Fo sometimes you say. It like damn yeah but it's come it's come, it come yeah. but so that's funny because like that's like the word shit yeah like shit could be like you could look at something and go shit yeah. like that's good in portuguese is merda. Merda. okay merda. but shit can also be bad yeah you know like well fuck too like fuck could be good or fuck could be bad like you could stub your toe and go fuck <laughs> or you could you yeah. could see a girl with a beautiful body and go fuck, fuck. yeah yeah but poor is the same thing that's so crazy, porra, but it's cum. Porra, it's, and it's good. Cum. <laughs> it's like a big butt. Porra. But then you, 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 you're getting a choke, porra. It right. was bad. Exactly. Yeah, I got it. I got it. It's the same exactly. thing. Exactly. It's the 